Master. Blessed is our God, always now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the remission of the sins of him who has departed this life in blessed memory, let us pray to the Lord. For the ever memorable servant of God, Metropolitan Callistus, and for his repose, tranquility, and blessed memory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That he will pardon him every transgression, whether voluntary or involuntary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have 
that he may present himself uncondemned before the dread throne of the Lord of glory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who sorrow and grieve, who await the consolation of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that he will release him from all sickness, sorrow, and sighing, and settle him with the light of God's countenance, shall visit him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord our God will establish his soul in a place of brightness, a place of green pasture, a place of repose, where all the righteous dwell, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that he may be numbered with those <clears throat> in the bosom of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Having entreated for him the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of sins, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. For thou art the resurrection, and the life, and the repose of thy servant, the ever-memorable Metropolitan Callistos, who has fallen asleep, O Christ <coughs> our God. And unto thee do we send up glory, together with thy Father, who is without beginning, in thy most holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In the eighth tone, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are they whom thou hast chosen and taken to thyself, O Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. memories from generation to generation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The soul shall dwell with the blessed. Alleluia. Save me. 
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Again we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, the ever-memorable Metropolitan Callistus, departed this life, and that he may be pardoned all his sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord our God will establish his soul with a just repose. Lord, have mercy. 
the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of his sins, let us ask of Christ, our immortal King and God. And it will let us pray to the Lord. God of spirits and of all flesh, who has trampled down death and overthrown the devil and given life unto thy world, do thou the same Lord give rest to the soul of thy departed ever memorable servant Metropolitan Callistos, in a place of brightness, a place of refreshment, a place of repose, whence all sickness, sorrow, and sighing have fled away. Pardon every transgression which he has committed, whether by word or deed or thought. For thou art a good God and lovest mankind. For there is no man who lives yet does not sin. For thou only art without sin. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy word is truth. For thou art the resurrection and the life and the repose of thy servant, the ever-memorable Metropolitan Callistos, who is fallen asleep, O Christ our God, and unto thee do we send up glory together with thy Father, who is without beginning in thy most holy, good, and life-giving spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. <laughs> Amen. Give rest with the just our Savior unto thy servant. Establish him in thy courts as it is written. Disregard his transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, committed in knowledge or for thou art good and love this mankind. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. From a virgin thou didst shine forth to the world, through her making us children of light. O Christ our God, have mercy. steadfast love, according to thy abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned, and done that which is evil in thy sight, so that thou art justified in thy sentence, and blameless in thy judgments. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Fill me with joy and gladness, let the bones which thou hast broken rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners will return to thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of thy deliverance. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou hast no delight in sacrifice, were I to give a burnt offering, thou wouldst not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good to Zion in thy good pleasure, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then wilt thou delight in right sacrifices, and burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on thy altar. When Israel passed on foot over the sea, as if it were dry land, and beheld their pursuer Pharaoh drowning in the sea, they cried aloud unto God, Let us sing a song of victory. Give rest, O Lord. 
to the soul of thy servant who has fallen asleep. Give rest, O Lord, to the soul of thy servant who has fallen asleep. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and unto ages of ages. has established us upon the rock of thy confession. Give rest, O Lord, to the soul of thy servant who has fallen asleep. Give rest, O Lord, to the soul of thy servant who has fallen asleep. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen, beholding the sea of life, surging with the storm of temptations, and taking refuge in thy calm haven, I cry unto thee. Raise up my life from corruption, O great be merciful one. Now 
and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. It is not possible for man to see God, upon whom the ranks of angels dare not gaze, but through you. Together with the heavenly host, we call you blessed. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our, our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever, and unto ages of ages. <laughs> Amen. With the souls of the righteous departed, give rest to the soul of thy servant, O Savior, preserving him in the blessed life which is with thee who love his mankind, in the place of thy rest, O Lord, where all thy saints repose. Give rest also to the soul of thy servant, for thou only lovest mankind. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, thou art the God who descended into hell, and loose the bonds of the captives. Give rest also to the soul of thy servant, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen, O Virgin, O Lord, pure and blameless, who despair God without seed. Intercede that the soul of your servant may be saved. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy. We pray thee, hearken, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, the ever-memorable Metropolitan Callistus, departed this life, and that he may be pardoned all his sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. That the Lord God will establish his soul where the just repose. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. The mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of his sins. Let us ask of Christ, our immortal King and God. It, o Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who has trampled down death and overthrown the devil and given life unto thy world. Do thou the same Lord give rest to the soul of thy departed servant, the ever memorable Metropolitan Callistos, in a place of brightness, a place of refreshment, a place of repose whence all sickness, sorrow, and sighing have fled away. Pardon every transgression which he has committed, whether by word or deed or thought, for thou art a good God and lovest mankind, for there is no man who lives yet does not sin. For thou only art without sin, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy word is truth. For thou art the resurrection and the life and the repose of thy servant, the ever memorable Metropolitan Callistos, who is fallen asleep, O Christ our God. And unto thee do we send up glory together with thy Father, who is without beginning in thy most holy, good, and life-giving spirit, now and ever and unto ages. 
of Asia. Amen. With thou, most holy Theotokos, save us. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without corruption you gave birth to God the Word. To Theotokos we magnify you. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God and our hope. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Father bless. May he who rose from the dead, who himself has authority over the living and the dead, Christ our true God, through the prayers of his most pure mother of the holy glorious, and all laudable apostles of our venerable and God-bearing fathers and of all the saints, establish the soul of his servant, the ever-memorable Metropolitan Kalistos, who has been taken from us in the mansions of the righteous. Give him rest in the bosom of Abraham and number him among the righteous and have mercy on us for he is good and loves mankind. Amen. Grant rest eternal in blessed repose, O Lord, to the soul of thy servant, the ever-memorable Metropolitan Callistos, who is fallen asleep, and make his memory to be eternal. that we have uh, over 250 people participating in this uh, memorial service uh, remembering uh, Metropolitan Kalistos Ware who has I think touched every Orthodox Christian life at least in the English speaking world in some manner. So we'll continue this tribute and this memorial. Uh, if you can all be patient with us a little bit, those of you who are virtual uh, while we sort of wrap up here and then get to our stations and actually begin the rest of the evening. God grant you all long life and may God grant uh, Metropolitan Callistos Paradise.
Good evening. I'm Father Chad Hatfield, the president of St. Vladimir's Seminary in Yonkers, New York. Thank you for joining us this evening. We've just come from the Three Hierarchs Chapel, where we have prayed a Panahita, uh, this being the 40th day since the falling asleep in the Lord of His Eminence, Metropolitan Kalistos Ware. As I said briefly in the chapel this evening, I don't believe, in the, at least in the English-speaking world, that there is a single person uh, who has not been touched by Kalistos Ware in one way or another through his writings, through his words, and sometimes it's through his spiritual children, sometimes it's through other people who have read Kalistos Ware and pass it on. It's just immeasurable, uh, the impact that he has had uh, in orthodoxy, and as I keep underscoring, especially in the English-speaking world. Since 1972, Metropolitan Kalistos has participated in and delivered keynote lectures on our campus here at St. Vladimir's, He's led seminars, been present at conferences, delivered lectures. He's attended innumerable meetings, some of those uh, involving publications with SVS Press. Uh, in 2010, it was the great blessing of St. Vladimir Seminary to award him with the degree Doctor of Divinity Honoris Causa. He fostered close friendships with all of the former deans here, faculty, key persons, members of the staff, uh, he was a delight to work with in many publications with SVS Press. The Press Archives contain lengthy correspondence with him on the publication and reprinting of his books published by SVS Press, including The Orthodox Way, which was first co-published with A.R. Mowbray's in the UK in 1979, with SVS eventually taking over English language and world language rights. The press has reprinted the book almost every two years since the original publication and is now listed in our modern classics series. The Orthodox Way has been a bridge to all believers, denominations, and seekers. Metropolitan Kalistos has contributed articles, forwards, prefaces, endorsements, to a number of other SVS Press titles. SVS Press publishes Abba, his fate shrift honoring him for his significant contributions to the study of Orthodox theology. The idea for the collected works was initiated and conceived by SVS Press. The project began in the 1990s with Metropolitan Kalistos agreeing to the concept with volume one, The Inner Kingdom, that was published in the year 2000. Volume two, in the image of the Trinity Essays of the Human Person is collected and is ready for the final edit. It's comprised of some 16 articles written by His Eminence. The entire collected works shall be com comprised of over 100 of his selected articles through the years. Metropolitan Kalistos always wanted to edit each article before publication, but he reached that point in which he realized this was just too great of a task. His literary executor, Father Andrew Louth, agrees with SVS Press that the articles should simply be published standalone in their original form, and this is a project, as I said, that we have undertaken, and it will be our great honor to continue to make the voice, words, and wisdom of Metropolitan Kalistos available in the English world. Finally, the Collected Works series, Volume 3, The Burning of the Bush, Transfiguration, Cosmic, Human, and Divine. Volume 4 will be titled Eternity in Time, The Mystery of the Church. Volume 5, Guardians of the Walls, Monasticism in the Orthodox Church. And volume six, A Prayer for All Seasons, the Jesus Prayer, Yesterday and Today. So as you can see, the relationship between St. Vladimir's Seminary and Metropolitan Kalistos is very old and very deep. And it's one that we cherish very much. And so as a tribute this evening, as a way of continuing to honor him as we pre prayed on this, the 40th day, of his falling asleep in the Lord. We've asked two of his former students, two 
people who know him well and will have, I'm sure, an incredible treasury of memories to share with us and thoughts as we continue this reflection this evening. So I want to introduce His Eminence Archbishop Alexander, the Archbishop of the OCA Diocese of the South and the Bulgarian Diocese. Your Eminence, thank you for joining us this evening. My pleasure, Father. And I will also be hearing from Professor Peter Butinyev, who was his student uh, in Oxford. Uh, there is, I, I'll go ahead and say this, a, a kind of what some of us refer to in a kind of you know, bit of envy. There's a certain kind of Oxford mafia, uh, those uh, Orthodox people who were blessed to be able to study with him. So I think, Peter, you're representing the group. And as I said, some of us look at you with much envy because that must have been a remarkable experience to be able to have your tutelage directed by him. So we'll begin the evening then, uh, I think, with your eminence, uh, maybe reflecting on the significance of Metropolitan Kalistos and, and uh, maybe some nuggets and memories that uh, many of us won't know, but that you can share with us. Thank you, Father. I don't know that I can easily sum up Metropolitan College's significance. As I begin to think of it, and as I heard your introduction re regarding the collected works and the breadth and depth of his concerns. I think that if I go down that road, it will just keep expanding. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't have the time. I have a diocesan council at seven. So I have to be brief. In my own case, there was his Orthodox Church which I've come to think probably the best single introduction to the Orthodox Church in any language, uh -huh. not simply English. There are others and others written by very notable figures like Father John Mayendorf, Father Sergei Bulgakov, But his is remarkable for its comprehensiveness, clarity, and as so typical of him, fairness. Mm. He updated it regularly, I understand. It's many, many reprints, republishings are not simply repetitions, but changed reflecting the changing circumstances of the Orthodox world, especially in the wake of the Soviet Union's dissolution. <clears throat> I met him first in the summer of 1972, when Father John Meyendorf had encouraged me at the close of my second year at St. Vladimir's to apply to Oxford. And so taking advantage of a family trip to Europe, our one and only, I went off to Oxford for a couple of weeks and met him. I don't remember any details of that meeting. Other than that, we agreed I would apply. <laughs> and as it turned out it worked. My acquaintance with him as his advisee for the dissertation has to be very short. My subject, Dionysius Arabagidis, was not Metropolitan Callius's cup of tea. Um, I don't think he was much interested. In Dionysius, I think he shared the general
the general will bewilderment bewilderment is probably too strong a phrase but we'll go with it for a moment of the scholarly community at the Arabogetical writings. Nobody in the 70s when I got there had figured him out, except the ancients, I believe, but that's another story. And he seemed a most extraordinary anomaly. Soaked in the metaphysics of Proclus de Atticus, and posing as a first century disciple of St. Paul, he simply seemed to most a monumental fraud. And to others who discerned in him, like Vladimir Lossky, important elements of the spiritual and theological tradition of the East, there was still lacked a comprehensive understanding how it all fit. Because while Dionysus was famous on the one hand for apophaticism, he was also famous or maybe better infamous for the invention of the word hierarchy and how those two fit, no one could see. And Metropolitan Callis is no more than anyone else. So he simply, as it were, prescinded from Dionysius and left me to go to it and then waited with great, if somewhat uh, praying patience for something to appear for me. And he was waiting most of the time in vain. I spent much of my early years in Oxford seeing him walk up the street and ducking around a corner so he wouldn't see me <clears throat> and confront me with a, with a query for something written because I couldn't. I could take notes. I read voluminously. Took scads of notes but I couldn't make the damn thing work. <laughs> and so I was blocked. I did get his permission in my, the close of my third year to go to Greece for a year. It turned out to be two. And that because as I told him, I've got to find a holy man to see if this whole thing is true, meaning Christianity, not simply Dionysius. And I figure that in Greece and Mount Athos, at least there's got to be one of them. So he gave me his blessing and I got the help of the Greek Archbishop of the time for Thyatira in Great Britain, Athenagoras. And happy memory, at least for me, happy memory. And went and found my holy man and found a monastery that was exemplary and eventually arrived at the sense of Dionysius thanks to that monastery and that holy man, its abbot. And wrote the thing, much to his delight and astonishment, as I think he'd given up by that point. And at the very end of the process, he became very active and was immensely useful in preparing the thing for completion and suggestions and edits and the like. It was he who pushed for Henry, Ch Henry Chadwick to be one of my examiners, which terrified me. And he agreed with my suggestion, my counter, my suggestion that the other examiner be Sebastian Brock, who I only knew as this sweet little man who showed up in St. Citrus and Albus meetings, and I had no idea of his prominence. 
is immense prominence in Syriac studies. So I just thought I was getting a nice little guy <laughs> to be an examiner. And he turned out to ask the part of the more probing questions of the two. But as it turned out, rather useful questions. So I would find out later in my later in my life. So we got through that. We got through the exercise. The viva was very short, only about an hour and a half, I think. Neither of the examiners was prepared particularly to contest me, so we got done. And I went off and the Tripartan Calices carried on. We met a number of times in subsequent years. I remember those meetings fondly, in particular, the one time I saw him really get angry. It was at the um, Monastery of Bosse in Italy, which has an annual conference on Orthodox spirituality, where yeah. anyone who's anyone in the Orthodox world or the Catholic world who works in Eastern Christianity shows up once a year, and he did regularly. As do I when I can. Not that I'm anyone, but I do turn up when I can. And on this particular occasion over dinner, he was recalling the business at Ligonier in 1992. Mm -hmm. Yes. And just and just exploded. Um rightly, rightly exploded, because he was lamenting an extraordinarily an extraordinary lost opportunity to put the church together in North America, which that assembly represented and which was bungled by the mother churches, notably Constantinople. He went on at some length. And again, in the first uh, international meeting of the Orthodox Theological Association, in Yash, two and a half years ago, when he gave mm. yes. a reflection on the ecclesiastical situation in Ukraine, which, as you know, resulted in a what is effectively a kind of schism, or at least a break in communion, between Moscow and Constantinople, at least on Moscow's side. And I was from, I was not surprised, but impressed by how critical he was of his own patriarchate. Which I would take then as a kind of as a kind of exemplum of his remarkable unswerving integrity. All the other qualities which I could mention, I think others will might bring up, but well, I'll touch on them. In terms of his scholarly work and teaching, that precision and lucidity, clarity, fairness, I used his books throughout my teaching career. In particular, Orthodox Church and Orthodox Way. Um, and I found them invariably meaningful to students over the 23 years of my teaching, both baby undergraduates and upper division and even graduate students whom I would refer to one or another of his articles, particularly on the ascetical and spiritual life, since that's what I, that's what I focused on. I remember the humor, 
the graciousness, just the unfailing pleasure of his company, for which I remain grateful, for all of which I remain grateful to the present day. And they're all stopped. Thank you, Vladika. That was really, really both personal and insightful uh, to so many of us who, who have heard stories. There's so many stories that, that swirl around the figure. Uh, I, I too was present in Yash, uh, and I was I was absolutely delighted with the address because uh, in Bucharest at the airport, Father John Parker and I actually encountered him at the airport. And he was a bit confused as to how to make the connection to Yash. So the two of us escorted him uh, to the connection. And uh, I was, I, when, he, when he took the stage, I was actually unsure how strong he would be. And it was absolutely a remarkable address with much courage. Uh, again, I don't know if it's true or not, but just, I, I had heard that there was a movement to sort of suppress publishing it and making it known and he stood his ground and said those are my words and I'm not changing them and they will be released as I spoke them remarkable so thank you again and now uh Peter uh, I'll ask you to do similar things sort of reflect on your days as student and then uh your academic career and how he's influenced things and maybe some of your encounters here uh, at St. Vladimir's with his many many visits to us I will do my best, my dear Father Chad. Uh, I could listen to His Eminence speak yeah. <laughs> all evening, and and more uh, in the in the manner that he did. Um, I'm grateful to you, Father Chad, for the idea of this evening, uh, the Panihida and the remembrances. I think it was brilliant. And uh, today's the 40th day of uh, Ladeka Kalistos's repose, and uh, it's customary to mark that in our church and um, we're doing our best. It's an honor to be a part of uh, this remembrance and it's an honor to be a part of that little group that you call the mafia yes. <laughs> of, of his former students. It's, it's nothing but a blessing and a privilege to have been in that group. And um, I'll say it's more. a big one. That. Yeah, I know. Uh, I will list everybody that I could remember uh, oh yeah, please, please. And you yeah. can and you can correct me. I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> so, um, my reflections uh, will on and off be very personal. Uh, I have known Vladika Kalistos for nearly forty years now because um, mm. I think to be personal as as His Eminence was uh, is the best way that we can honor his memory and enhance our collective remembrance of him. As uh, Metropolitan Callistus himself used to say about the departed, he said, let us not say that we loved them, rather that we love them in the present tense, because this is a testimony to their eternal life, their life in God, which does not end and has no past tense. Yeah. So this is an expression of my present tense love for him that I think uh, we all share each in our own way. Uh, even as I delve into the past to talk about it, it's a very much present tense love. And I'll also share a few photos with you, uh, if I may. Um, it will surprise you to know that the first photo I ever took of Metropolitan Kalistos was here in Nara, Japan. Oh which uh, when I was living in Japan in the mid to late eighties, I had the fortune to have uh, the Orthodox priest in Osaka with whom I was very, very close, told me, oh, you know, Kalistos Ware is coming. I said, what? I was already reading his book, of course, uh, the Orthodox way, especially. And he came together with Mark Stoko, who was then president of Sindesmos in Finland. And the two of them came so that Bishop Callistos Ware could deliver some talks on the Jesus prayer. And so he came and, and, and I was, uh, as the local expert, <laughs> English speaking expert, I was given the wonderful task of showing them around 
uh, some of my favorite sites in Nara and here in Kyoto at the Zen Garden of Ryoanji, which is one of my favorite places in the whole world. Uh, and he sat and meditated at this garden, uh, meditated in whatever sense you want to call it. Um, and uh, we reflected together on the, on the meaning of these spaces. Uh, here he is. Uh, I am on the left, uh, even skinnier and taller than I am now. <laughs> and um, in the middle is um, Father Proclus Ushimaru, who is also an alumnus of St. Vladimir's Seminary, and Vladika Kalistos. Um, so uh, these are uh, from the mid 80s photos of Kalistos Ware. And then um, during that time when he was visiting Japan, I uh, shared many just kind of private moments with him. We, we took the train together between Osaka and Kyoto several times. And um, I asked him what he was working on. And he said he was working on a book on the human person. And that's a book that we've never seen. Uh, but Father Chad tells us that uh, in the form of some collected essays, we're going to see his, uh, his thoughts on that subject, which is going to be so important. Um, but as we know, after the Orthodox Church and the Orthodox way, he didn't really write new books as such. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there are collections of essays, and there's a lot of other output that I'm about to talk about. But he chose to devote his energies to direct them elsewhere. At that time, I asked him to sign my copy of The Orthodox Way, and, and he noticed that it was a well-thumbed copy. Uh, he also joked that by then he'd probably signed so many copies of The Orthodox Way that whoever owned an unsigned copy would have a collector's item. <laughs> Classic uh, Callistos humor. Uh, but those two early books, The Orthodox Way and The Orthodox Church, especially The Orthodox Way, elevated him to the status of really the primary spokesperson for orthodoxy, the go-to authority, before that field became a bit more crowded. And in some sense, even with more people today who might speak for orthodoxy, Metropolitan Callistos remains somehow preeminent. And that's partly because so many of today's orthodox spokespeople either came to orthodoxy because of the orthodox way or had their orthodoxy confirmed and strengthened mm -hmm. by the orthodox way. So yes, he didn't really produce books after that. And I think that represents a kind of a conscious sacrifice on his part, or in any case, a very deliberate choice that he made to devote the primary focus of his energy to reaching people in other ways. What are these other ways? I'm glad you asked. Let me list them for you and reflect a bit on each. He reached people through shorter form essays, like The Power of the Name, How to Read the Bible. You will find these in parishes, on aggregating websites everywhere. He also wrote the prefaces, as uh, Father Chad alluded to, to countless Orthodox and other patristic texts, always very thoughtful prefaces, informed and informative, never calling attention to himself, but always to the text or the book at hand. Then there were many essays, substantial works that, as we just heard, will be made available through the collected works that our SVS Press is honored to be entrusted with in the coming years. He also reached people through talks, at conferences, at parishes, at those many little study gatherings, those rarefied groupings that uh, some of us were able to be present at. Whatever the audience, his talks were an inspired blend of deep devotion, profound information, and also tremendous humor. He spoke with such clarity and organization that you could always follow him. He instilled in me the credo to which I aspire. Mm. 
<laughs> namely, and it's the one that I give all my students. He said, when you talk or write, first tell people what you'll be saying, then say it, and then tell people what you said. <laughs> of course, he spoke not only in complete sentences, but in complete paragraphs. Again, so followable. And with that unforgettable, almost over-the-top British pronunciation that even the Brits love to mimic. <laughs> yes. So uh, he's, uh, again, unforgettable. How else did he reach people? Well, through his immense work in translation. He translated with colleagues the Lenten Triodian, the Festal Menaean, and the multiple volumes of the Philokalia. So it's thanks to him and to his colleagues that we have these liturgical and ascetical masterpieces in English, specifically in an English that bears his knowledge and his love for both the Greek and the English languages. He reached people also by being a consummate teacher. He was Spalding Lecturer of Eastern Orthodox Studies at Oxford. Myself, I was resident in Oxford from 1990 to 1994, during which time I was his student, first for an MPhil degree, for which I had weekly tutorials with him. I would come to his office, located behind secret staircases in Pembroke College, <laughs> Or I would show up at his home on Staverton Road, where his mother Everald, of blessed memory, would give me tea while I waited for him to finish with his previous student and make chit chat. And then I would enjoy an hour long session with the great man each week, reading aloud my essay and hearing his thoughtful comments. Then he was supervisor of my DPhil, a relationship that lasted several more years much more infrequent meetings. In all of this, I was a member of that, again, privileged, rarefied group of people who had the great fortune of studying under him. And now, uh, with, with the help of some friends, I, I texted and emailed today, uh, Brandon Gallagher and Metropolitan Savas, uh, I can list them. His Eminence Archbishop Alexander Galitsyn, Metropolitan Hilarion Alfeyev, Archbishop Makarios Tiliridis of Kenya, Metropolitan Pantelemon Kalpakidis, Professor Christopher Venyamin at St. Tikhon's, Father John Baer in Aberdeen, Father John, Father Deacon John Chrysavgis, Dr. Tamara Grzelidze, Professor Marcus Plested, Father Nikolai Saharov, Dr. Elizabeth Theokratov and Metropolitan Savas Zimbilis. Let's see, I have another photo of, of just a few of us uh, of this group uh, at St. Vladimir's Seminary. Uh, not that one, not that one, this one. Uh, there's uh, Father John Chrysav Gis, Metropolitan Savas, His Eminence, Father John Baer, et moi. So that's um, at, I think, the last visit uh, of Metropolitan Callistos, Father yes. Chad, isn't it? When yeah. we gave him an honorary doctorate? Yes. Yes. Uh, do you remember the year, Father Chad? Uh, 2010. Oh. So there you are. Um, so uh, that is, I think, a complete list, and I could be wrong. I'm open to please text or email me as soon as possible if I missed somebody or if I missed you. But I'll say the large percentage of his students became teachers, authors, clergymen, hierarchs. There's another specific way uh, and very significant way that Metropolitan Callistos reached people very deeply, and that is by being a pastor. Mm. For decades, he headed the Greek parish in the small church on Canterbury Road in Oxford, and that in itself entailed great pastoral skills as it was a complicated community, two parishes, Greek and Russian on two calendars, sharing one church. He devoted great energy and skill to making all of that work. He was a faithful and wonderful celebrant 
of the liturgical services. He would celebrate on those Sundays assigned to the Greek community and either concelebrate or simply sit in the sanctuary for the Sundays assigned to the Russian parish. But he was always there because he loved the liturgy and liturgical celebration. As you can imagine, his sermons were of the highest quality. They were obviously highly informed and erudite, but they cut to the heart of the event, whether it was a feast, a specific Sunday with its gospel reading, and he reached people wherever and whoever they were. Also, as a pastor, he would receive visitors from far and wide who sought his pastoral counsel on a wide variety of issues from simple to quite complex. So he was a pastor, a guide, a listener, and his very deep pastoral experience and sensitivities increasingly penetrated his public comments and the few written reflections he offered in the past decade. It was his deep listening to people where they were in their needs that led to his careful, though never insistent, reflections on women's ordination, especially to the diaconate, as well as his thoughtful questions about how to deal pastorally with people with same-sex attraction. And in these, he was, again, very careful not to overturn traditional teaching, but really to consider how best to retain people for Christ's holy church, keep them within that flock, show them that they were heard, and loved. Some of those reflections were very challenging and, and, and very difficult to read for many of the same people that Metropolitan Callistos had helped to bring into the Orthodox Church, maybe especially from Anglicanism. But in all of this, he managed to continue to make us all think, to make us all reflect deeply on what the Church is and how to come closer to Jesus Christ through the Church. So it was in all these ways, rather than by writing new books, that he chose to devote his energies, reaching people through talks, essays, and lesser writings, through translations, through his liturgical and pastoral ministry. In all this, he was a model hierarch. As we know, the office of hierarch is so deeply entrusted with liturgical ministry and oversight and with teaching. And that's who and what he was. And so as I begin to wind down these reflections, I'd like to add just a few more personal memories and a couple of photos, because during his time, during my time as his student, my wife-to-be, Patricia Fan, was in his parish and was his confessee. And so he agreed to celebrate our wedding. I have a photo. Let's see. That wedding was celebrated in Three Hierarchs Chapel at St. Vladimir's Seminary. Um, and um, tomorrow, October 4th, we are celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary. So uh, it has endured by his prayers, by his unforgettable sermon, which I probably could recite for you almost by memory. It was so clear and so memorable, just an iconic wedding sermon. Um, Another memory to share with you then is um, already uh, His Eminence Archbishop Alexander spoke about that meeting in Yash. Uh, and this is a photograph of him delivering his uh, address, the inaugural address of that event uh, at the International Orthodox Theological Association meeting there. That memorable speech. Um, in this amazing theater <laughs> in Yash. Uh, and uh, later on in that event, uh, Metropolitan Callistos and I shared uh, some time at dinner and you'll be happy to see Archbishop Alexander that uh, I have a picture of the three of us <laughs> as well. You can see all three of us here. Um, I think that's the last photo I have uh, to share. But um, so uh, in closing, we say and we sing memory eternal, 
for those who have fallen asleep. And we say and sing this, praying that God eternally remember this person, just as the repentant thief asked this of Jesus on the cross to be remembered in the kingdom. But in the case of some extraordinary people, memory eternal might also refer to the indelible and enduring character of their influence, their memory among us in this earthly life. So we consider the enduring memory of Metropolitan Callisto Square among all of us who continue to be enriched and enlivened by what he wrote, by what he said, how he lived, who he was. Returning now to how I began my remarks, it would be wrong of us to say that we knew him, that we learned from him, that we loved him. No, we know him. We learn from him and we love him. Memory eternal, dearly esteemed and beloved Ladega Callistos, where? Amen. Amen. Peter, that was a beautiful, beautiful reflection. And again, so insightful, sharing with many of us uh, things that sometimes we instinctively knew and, and you have confirmed for us and, and many years to you and Patricia uh, as you mark your uh, wedding anniversary. Thank you. I would like to mention one small book, Peter, uh, which I think was probably transcribed from one of his talks that when I was a parish priest, I found so useful with evangelicals who were exploring orthodoxy. It's a little thin book titled, How Are We Saved? Oh, uh, yes. Very thin little book. Uh, SVS Press didn't publish it, but I, you know, it's still available. We might steal it. <laughs> But it was, again, it just so simple, but so clear, and, it, and it, it was invaluable with helping people to understand an orthodox understanding of a question like, how are we saved? Quite right. I remember it well, Father Chad. Thank you for calling yeah. that our memory. Yeah. I have, I have one question for you, Vladika, which is, uh, we got uh, some questions about his monastic <laughs> life on Patmos. <laughs> I don't know if you can share with us anything, any insights or things you know about uh, what drew him to that particular monastery and his monastic life. I don't know if the if Patmos was his choice. Ah. Um, he may have been sent there. I don't remember that he chose to go there. Um, it is under the ecumenical patriarch, after all. Mm -hmm. So I rather think that he was sent as part of his part of the process of being part of the patriarch. Yes. Um, and he would he didn't say much about it. I remember I, I I remember a few remarks about the plaza and some of the monks. But being at the Monastery of John of the Revelation, I don't know how that affected him. Yeah. All right. I find it uh, interesting now in reflection, but yes, I don't sure. remember him on the subject. Okay. Lots of questions about that, and, and maybe we'll learn more as, as we get deeper into his writings. Uh, any closing remarks you'd like to make, Ladika? Oh, I think if I, if I got started, I'd just keep going. All right. And Good. I don't think... What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. Because well, I'm I can't thank you enough for taking... and, a, and a chancellor and a treasurer waiting for my, waiting for my understand. attendance. And thank you so much for taking time to be with us tonight. It, it was invaluable to have you with us. And, and Peter, any closing thoughts that you have? Well, only that... Um, our dear Sarah Werner has asked me to remind people that we just, um, I think we just have released or are releasing an audio book version of, um, yes. but we just released it of the Orthodox way. And um, 
we tried apparently our press tried to have him read it wouldn't that have been great yes but too ill by that point uh, but it's still really wonderful to have that in audiobook format uh, as as um, his eminence and everybody remarks i mean that book continues to shape so many people yes and it bears rereading re reinvolvement well, thank you again, Peter, for your participation today. And uh, for those of you who are listening, and there are a considerable number, uh, you heard me reference the upcoming publications. Uh, and if you would like to assist with those publications by offering a subvention, uh, you'll actually then be noted in the publication. So if you're interested in helping us to finance these publications, uh, you may contact Sarah Werner at SVS Press directly or you may contact me, or you could contact uh, Professor Butinyev, and we'll make sure that it all gets directed in the right place and you get a response. So uh, take that to prayer. And if the Lord leads you to be a sponsor of one of these books, then uh, we'll all rejoice and that'll help actually to speed up the process. Well, again, uh, my thanks for everyone's participation tonight and your continued prayers as we continue to pray for the repose of the soul of the ever-memorable Metropolitan Callistos Ware. May God grant him paradise. Amen. <laughs>